Hi, and welcome back to another edition of BC Theory. So today we're going to continue from where we left off. So we've been talking about these things called the regular languages. And what are these? These are the languages of DFAs, and those are deterministic finite automata. So the languages here are the sets of strings that the DFAs recognize. So we saw some examples, sigma star, empty set, the set containing the empty string, uh, sigma star uh, set minus the empty string, so every string in sigma star without the empty string, so every non-empty string. So we're going to actually show a large class of languages here. So let's let L be any language. And just for shorthand, we're going to let L bar, so it's L with the little bar on the top of it, that's going to be equal to sigma star minus, uh, not the set, that language. So in other words, we're taking every string in sigma star and we're taking away every string in L. So that's actually what we're seeing here. So we had sigma star and we had uh, the set containing the empty string here. And the language right here is just every string that's not in that. And what we call this right here is called the complement language. In that if you have a string in L, it is not in L bar. And if we have a string that's not in L whatsoever, then it is inside of L bar. So if we look at it, we can look at it this way. So if we consider this box to be sigma star, everything in it, and let's just say that the language L is this um, set right here, so it's everything inside here, then we can consider L bar to be everything else outside of that uh, this bubble right here. So it's every string that is not in L. So it's just, if it's in L, it is not in L bar, and if it is not in L, it is an L bar. So why do we want to care about such a thing? So if we know how to solve a particular problem, then what this is saying, then if we can solve L bar, which is every the problem, or at least the strings that are not in the problem that we're considering, then that's really good. So what we're going to be able to show here is if... L is regular, then L bar is also regular. So we're going. This is an, a theorem that we're going to prove. So this is saying if we have show that L is a regular language, then that implies, or at least the theorem implies, that L bar is also regular. So in other words, if we take every string that is not in L and consider that language, then that language is also regular. So let's prove this. So how do we prove this? Here's a pro tip. Whenever you see something like L is regular, immediately think, what does that mean? Well, in our context, that means that L has a corresponding DFA. So L has a DFA, let's call it M, and it has five parts, Q, Sigma, Delta, Q0, and F. So it has a DFA because it's regular. We're assuming that L is regular, therefore it has a DFA because that's the definition of what a regular language is. So that means that if we have a string in L, then that means if we feed that string into the machine M, it will be accepted. And if we feed a string that's not in L at all, and we feed it into M, then it will not be accepted. So if W is in L, then M accepts W. And if W is not in L, this implies M does not accept W. That that's just what the meaning of what this uh, DFA does. Well, let's see. Well, consider the fact that this case right here, where W is not an L. Well, 
if it does not accept w, or, or at least we can consider both cases, m accepts w, this implies that the, the resulting state, wherever it is, is in the set of final states right here. f is the set of final states. If m accepts w, you land it in a final state. That's what it means to accept the string in the first place. And if m does not accept w, the resulting state is not in the uh, set of final states. So if we interchange the roles of which states are final and which ones are not, then we might have a, a shot at getting the complement language. So let's define, I'm going to define a DFA M bar. The bar here doesn't mean anything in terms of the DFA. It does for the, the language. It doesn't mean for the DFA. It's just a name. So I'm going to define M to M bar to be the same states, same alphabet, same transition function, same start state, but the final states this time will be every state in Q set minus F. So every state that is not a final state before now is a final state. And if it was final before, it is not final now. So I claim that the language of this machine right here is L bar, the complement language. So why is this? So let's think about this. So if W in L, this implies that the resulting state was in F before. That's just restating what this says up here. Then what well, this also implies that M prime uh, or M bar does not accept W because the resulting, was, resulting state was a, a final state before, so now it's not a final state because we didn't change the transition function. The DFA is exactly the same except which states are final and which ones are not. So the resulting state was a final state, therefore M, M bar does not accept W because the state wherever it ended up in is not a final state anymore. And consequently, if W was not in L before, the resulting state before was not in F. So this imp implies that M prime does accept W because wherever it ended up, it wasn't a final state before, but M, M bar just flips which states are final and which ones are not. And so therefore M bar does accept the string W. But let's see, if the string was in L before, it is not in the language of M bar. And if it wasn't in the language L before, it is in the language M, M bar right now. So therefore, this claim is true. And why does that help us? Because we just made, we found a DFA for the complement language, which is exactly what we wanted to show. So what's another term for this? Another way of saying this is that regular languages are closed under complement. So what, is the, what in the world does that mean? That means that if we take a regular language and apply the complement operation to it, we will stay within the set of regular languages. So if L is regular, then L bar is also regular because we just apply the complement operation in the way that we did here, and we ended up with a regular language. So therefore, the set of regular languages is closed under complement. So I hope that was interesting. Leave a comment below if you were able to find it out a different way. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps with the support of the, the growth of the channel. We're almost at 10,000 views. So I thank you all for your support. If you want to support additionally, there are other links in the video description. And as always, I'll see you next time.